Coming up on Mountain News this morning, a Kentucky veteran finds a way to help other vets cope with the trauma that comes with protecting our country. And two students in our region help folks get their groceries without having to leave their homes while making the money at the same time. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning to you. It's Monday. I'm Dakota Makris and it's almost 530 here. Thanks so much for waking up with us and let's take it over to Brandon to get you a quick look at that forecast and all is calm. It was kind of chilly this morning. I think leaving mm -hmm. my house. My car said it was 30, but I believe the high for hazard 28 right yeah, now. Exactly. Ooh, there we go. Over the temperature. It's not the high. Well, what a, you know, yeah, you know, I, 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 know, I, I know where I you're tried. going. I got you. I'm <laughs> wavelength. I, I got you there. But yes, it is a cold morning yeah. out there in a lot of areas. I think when I left the house this morning, it was in the low 20s. But again, kind of all depends on where you are. Let's take a look first at our traffic camera over at US 119 and US 23 at Jenkins. I was just telling Dakota there between the breaks there, I can tell now since they've zoomed that camera out a little bit or the angles position, that little underpass you see, that's the way you go to Pikeville and the other one, the ramp coming up through there is the way over toward the pound and, and the Virginia line. So there you go. Always nice to give you a traffic report. Not a whole lot there to tell you about there this morning, though. 19 Monticello, 33 Jackson. That is our range this morning. A lot of 20s out there, so bundle up as you head out door. That includes statewide, 33 in Jackson, one of the warmest spots in the state. 25 in Cincinnati, 25 Owensboro, 27 Nashville, and 24 Tri-Cities. Get those bowls out this morning. Time to get up and get moving, and we're going to see some cold temperatures as we head into your breakfast forecast, but some sunshine as well, and temperatures will warm up pretty quickly once we get to daylight. Dakota? All right, Brandon, thank you. Well, you may have heard it yourself. An Amber Alert went out on phones across the area. Bardstown police say 32-year-old Richard Gray shot and killed his girlfriend and took out and took off with four, her four kids. Police say they were called to his home for a welfare check, and that's when they found that woman. Neighbors told police they saw Gray load the four kids in a Jeep and take off. And it was so quiet. So it was quiet even when the guy was here. But when this happened, it was so heartbreaking. Well, that Amber Alert was canceled after police in Mount Vernon, Illinois, caught Gray and found the four kids. They were unharmed. Well, it's rare to see military men and women returning home from active combat unscathed, but there are several groups and organizations out there designed to ease veterans' return to civilian life. One Whitley County couple is doing just that, but with a creative twist. Our Alyssa Williams spoke with the founders of the Resilient Knights nonprofit organization to learn more about their mission. After medically retiring due to a traumatic brain injury he acquired in Afghanistan, U.S. Army Sergeant Major Thomas Eichen and his wife Michelle were adjusting to their new normal. Nothing teaches an individual that is in the military and their family how to deal with being injured or ill. There's just no, no booklet on that. It was when they were taking part in a veteran pottery class that Michelle and Thomas came up with an idea that would change everything. Uh, what we learned out of that was when you're working with your hands and you've got something in front of you, you're not thinking about all the problems that are going on around you. You're thinking about what's right in front of you. And when you're able to finish that project, you feel like you've done something. You know, and that we picked up on that, and that's where we got the idea for the nonprofit. The two founded Resilient Knights, a nonprofit dedicated to providing veterans peer and art therapy. Through woodworking and other creative opportunities, Thomas and Michelle give support to veterans and their caregivers. And within a week, they can have this box that they can take home with them, and uh, we tell them, listen, you know, put that up on a shelf. You know, that way, if you ever have um, ideas of harming yourself or hurting yourself at all, uh, just look at, look at that box and give us a call. You know, because that's, sometimes that's all it takes is a phone call. Michelle Eichen says their organization helps others find a purpose after pain. We want to help veterans understand how important it is to turn around and help those that come behind us. You know, our path and what we had to go through educated us a lot. And going through that, if you can help someone else, that gives purpose to the struggle that you have. 
helping other servicemen and women find their way beyond the battlefield. In Whitley County, Alyssa Williams, WYMT, Mountain News. Well, they still have several plans in the works for the nonprofit, such as building cabins for the veterans and caregivers to utilize and a wood shop to host larger groups. Well, two students from South Laurel High School have created a grocery delivery service called CJ on the way. Anyone wanting their groceries or food delivered can t contact Connor Holland or Jared Baker. The service gives the county a local delivery option at a cheaper rate. Baker says they charge $4.99 plus 50 cents a mile for delivery. The average customer around here in London, uh, they only pay six to seven dollars for delivery. But for DoorDash, you're, you're, you might be looking at 10 to 15 dollars. Well, Baker says they also deliver in a larger radius compared to their competitors. Well, shops in one mountain town are ready to welcome in couples for Valentine's Day. Our Jordan Mullins has more from small business owners in Pikeville about all there is to see and do with your significant other this Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day is on its way, and small businesses in downtown Pikeville are ready to help you find that perfect, unique gift for your special someone. You'll be able to find something that's handmade, locally made, or just something that's different for everyone likes to have something a little different, especially when you're giving and receiving gifts. And business owners are there to help you find something personal. I always say shop small, shop local, go downtown, check things out if you're having a hard time picking something out. But if you have already gotten your perfect gift, the downtown area has plenty of things to do, all hosted by local businesses. I have a date night that's a, a shop small date night. You can come in here and, like I said, do a class with your, your Valentine or your Galentine. Either of that's really a good, fun thing to do. Painting, knitting, beer and chocolate pairing, and a comedy night, just to name a few events happening on February 12th, just before Valentine's Day. So, whether you are learning how to knit or kicking back with your partner at comedy night. The shops provide a lot of experiences and a lot of fun and, and experiential types of uh, educational, sometimes educational and sometimes just fun. So it's a good thing to come downtown and just enjoy yourself and have a fun time. You and your significant other will have a night to remember. In Pikeville, Jordan Mullins, WYMT Mountain News. Well, the yarn shop will host a how-to class for crocheting and heart-shaped coasters on Saturday. Well, love is priceless, but roses aren't, especially on Valentine's Day. Between pandemic-related supply chain challenges, worker shortages, and bad weather in international growing areas, prices, well, they're up. And not just for roses for Valentine's Day, flowers of all kind, including those for weddings and other special events, are increasing in price. When you would go over there, everything was full, and now there's some places that are closed, some are open, but you can see there's a shortage. Well, beyond the supply chain issues, there is still the expected Valentine's Day market for roses, so expect to pay a little more this year than you have in the past. A local business in Laurel County celebrated its one-year anniversary during the weekend. Located on Main Street, Local Honey has been serving specials in anticipation for the milestone. Co-owner Phil Smith says starting during the pandemic was risky. However, he says they are confident moving forward. Seeing the challenges that have been here in year one, we're feeling really good about the future. Again, people in the small community of London have supported us tremendously, and we're excited to see where Local Honey goes in the future. It's going to be a great thing for the community and a great thing for us. Well, Smith says they are thankful for the community support, making the one-year milestone possible. Well, the city of Whitesburg is accepting umbrella donations for an upcoming county project. Spearheaded by artist Mia Rouse's Art on Main project, the plan is to add umbrella alleys to each major city in Letcher County starting today. Anyone wanting to donate can drop off their umbrellas at Whitesburg City Hall. I can only imagine that's going to be uh, beautiful. You see lots of pictures from people that go to Dollywood each year and take pictures under the umbrellas there. And uh, I, I can't wait to see what it is here in uh, Letcher County and especially City of Whitesburg. Well, they are open Monday through Friday from 8.30 to 4.30. They are accepting umbrellas of any color, size, or pattern. Many people become well-known or even famous for their talents and skills, but one Laurel County native is gaining traction for something she's not good at. 
Cheyenne Loomis from London was, sell was selected as a competitor for the Food Network show Worst Cooks in America, where her and 11 other competitors fight to become the most improved cook. So far, her run has been interesting. She was even eliminated from the show earlier this month, but another competitor gave up their spot so Cheyenne could remain in the competition. I live in a small town, had never done anything like this before, and suddenly I'm in the kitchen with 12 different recruits from all different backgrounds, and we're all relying on each other and learning something new, and yeah, it just, it made me a different person. The show was literally life-changing for me. Well, you can catch Cheyenne compete on Worst Cooks in America every Wednesday at 9 p.m. on the Food Network. Well, just ahead, a famous, a world famous Olympian announces that this year's Winter Games are his last. We'll have more on that on the way. And we're looking at a dry and somewhat mild stretch of weather this week across the mountains. How long will that trend continue? I'll tell you, about three minutes.